So today we're going to show you how you can get your ESP32 or Team C3.6 set up as a, a NES emulator. As you can see here, playing Tetris. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel if you like this and our other videos and to stay up to date with product updates and features. So to start with, we're going to go to the MCU ME GitHub repository, which there's a link in the description for, and there is a wealth of information on this repository about the different devices you can use and make to support the console and PC emulation features of this package. As you can see here, there's neat little tables which break out everything from our Teensy 3.6, which we're using here, all the way up to the 4.1, including the PSRAM and VGA outputs, as well as the ESP32 boards. So you can also see there's a number of console emulators available as well. And we're going to be using the Nintendo NES emulator from here. There's further information about the folder structures and flashing process, which we'll go through briefly in our video now. So we've downloaded the GitHub repository onto our computer. And the first thing to do is to extract the SD zip and take the contents of this SD folder and put them onto a FAT32 formatted SD card. Then we're going to go and select which Teensy emulator we want. And as we're using 3.6, we'll be in the Teensy subfolder. Now, don't forget to check that the board is compatible with the emulator you're trying to run. So the NES is actually the TNC no friendo folder. And as you can see, there is an INO file in here. So if we just load Visual Studio, we can then go to the file and open Arduino project, and then just go to this folder and open the INO. This will load all of the relevant dependencies for you as well, and you'll just need to select the board as normal as your, your TNC or ESP, depending on which board you're using. So the next step is to go into the platform underscore config.h file and to alter any of these options to suit your specific hardware setup. So we're using the ILI9341 screen and we've inverted some of the buttons as well. And if you do need to check or change any of the I.O. pins, so here we've reverted the TFT DC pin back to 9, which is the standard pin, um, because we're not using the audio shield as yet. Then you can edit or view all the pins in the IO pins.h. So once you've configured all of your options, you just need to make note of some extra settings. So we found using the USB type of no USB and setting the optimization to smallest code to ensure this compiles and will fit onto your board in the, the example of Teensy that we're doing and then you can build and upload that onto your Teensy device. So at this point you've got essentially a board with the emulator uploaded to it but we still need to go and get some ROMs because the ROMs aren't included within the emulator package due to the, the size that it would make. So if we go to, for example, emulator games and download a ROM file for Tetris, we can then place this onto our SD card in the NES folder. And once we've got any games we want, we can eject that and insert it into our Teensy. So we'll just need to wire it all up as shown on the website and eventually you'll end up with your Teensy with the small ILI color screen and we have a small little gamepad that we've wired up though I'm not sure the wiring is quite right but as you can see Tetris is loaded on our Teensy and we can go and start a game now as you can see my, my wiring isn't quite right but you can turn the pieces and assuming you've connected everything correctly you'll be able to play the games better than I have been able to today don't forget to check other links in the description as there are some great videos from Teensy Projects.